UFC Louisville, we had 14 fights headlined by Nasserdine Imavev taking on Jared Cannonier, and it was an interesting card. There was some fun fights. There was a lot of controversy on this fight card, but I'm going to be recapping the fights quickly, keeping it as short as I can, running through from bottom to top. So let me know uh, if you cash any good bets or what your thoughts are on some of these judges, on some of these ref stoppages, and uh, do you want to see Strickland Imavev too, or... You know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you leave a like, click subscribe, helps out the channel a lot. Let's start at the bottom. First fight of the night, man. We had Pooja Tamar taking on Ryan Amanda. And first fight, and we already had some controversy, man. Uh, Tamar um, was able to edge the decision here, but most people, every single uh, member of the media, and seems like 90% of the fans, at least 99% of them who aren't in India, um, scored the fight for Ryan, Ryan Amanda. It was it's not like she ran away with the fight, but it was pretty clear. Um, but there's a little bit of extra conspiracies being thrown around because Tomar is was able to get the first win for, in the UFC for an Indian fighter, and obviously with that country having like the second biggest population, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, obviously, that's somebody that the UFC wants to get behind. But and she already has a huge following because of how big her um you know that country is. But do I think she won the fight? No, I don't. I thought Amanda won. But at the end of the day, man, these the judging has been crazy. So is this some crazy conspiracy or are these judges just absolutely terrible? Thirty twenty seven for Tomar though is absolutely crazy. Um, bad decision. I thought Amanda won. That's tough. Somebody loses half their paycheck, but it is what it is. Congrats to India. Next fight on the card, man, we had Cody Stammen taking on Taylor Lapalus. And I've always liked Cody Stammen. He just never, ah, man, he, he's a tough, durable dude, and he can wrestle, but he has trouble taking down these, you know, a lot a lot of these guys with decent takedown defense because MMA is just different than wrestling. Um, Cody was able to get to the hips, get deep on some of these takedowns, but, hey, shout out to Lapalus. You know, I had him bet. Um, I also had the over bet, so both of those hit here. Um, but, you know, Cody's tough. You know, he made it. He had some decent moments, but overall, Lapalus was able to land some shots. Stamen showed his durability, man. That's definitely still with him. So, um, good performance by La Lapalus. Was able to stuff the takedowns, land good shots on the feed. And, uh, yeah, it was a good performance, honestly. Needs to get some finishes because a lot of people really don't like to watch his fights. But, hey, at the end of the day, you got to get that double paycheck. So, we move on to the next fight, man. We had Denise Gomez taking on Eduardo Mora. Uh, Mora missed weight. She's huge for the division. And she had some instant karma here. Uh, fought a girl who's really not that big for the division. Um, almost got guillotined within, like, the first couple minutes. That was a tight guillotine. Uh, Gomez, I was worried she might have gassed her arms out. Um you know trying to get that squeeze because i could tell she she really went for it um but she, overall you know mora just gassed out too much you know she she gomez was tired but mora was that guy and, and and i will give her at least credit at least she's not doing uh the you know what what's the i keep forgetting his name uh andre lima from last week um you know where she comes in and didn't even try to make weight she tried to make weight and i think she already might not have the best gas tank but that that weight cut really took it out of her. She was done. Even like I, I was surprised she made it through the end of the fight because she was just shooting desperation takedowns on, you know, in a close fight that does not look good for the score or for the judges when you're when you're desperately shooting takedowns and then failing them. Um, I thought Gomez was the rightful winner. Shout out to everybody who had her bet. You know, I I considered it, but I I ended up not playing it. So hey, if you did play it, congrats to you. I saw a lot of people sending me their tickets. Congrats. Um, next up, we had Daniel Marcos taking on John Castaneda. Um, this is a fight that was really highly debated. I think probably like top two most debated fights on this card, uh, at least top three with the main event, this, and then the uh, Moises fight, um, which we'll talk about, of course. But, you know, I was on Marcos. It's not that I was super confident. I didn't know he was going to separate as much as he did here. Castaneda, I hear everybody was like, oh, he had him rocked in the third. Okay, how many times did Marcos have him rocked? You know, Marcos landing good shots, stuffing the majority of the takedowns. He looked good, man. Marcos, you know, he's been a guy that, you know, I have had in the back of my mind, like, there's going to be a, a time where I want to fade this guy, but they haven't given the matchup to where I've wanted to do that yet. 
16 and 0. Um, you know, the guy's pretty well rounded, solid enough takedown defense. He definitely showed that here. And now, you know, you got to mark that down if you've been watching him because Castaneda was shooting some decent takedowns, but Marco stuffed most of them, landed the better shots, hurt him, even showed that he can weather, you know, some shots. He did have to, like, kind of sprint for a little bit there, but, um, you know, he, he made it through, weathered some, you know, adversity. Marcos got it down. It was a good fight. It was a fun fight, honestly. Some some fun exchanges. Both guys had their moments, but Marcos definitely won 30-27. Um, we move on to the next fight. Um, next up, we had Montana De La Rosa, Andrea Lee. This fight literally played out exactly how I thought it would, man. Uh, we knew it was going to be a dicey split decision. I slightly leaned Lee, but this is why if you bet this fight, you, you like I said, you just go like fight goes a split. You know, the over. I bet the over. That cashed. Um, had that parlayed, but, you know, um, overall, it was a good fight, you know, uh, both corners were, like, adamant that they were winning the whole time, like, I don't know, man, this is close, 1-1, one, one. uh, went to the third, and Montana De La Rosa was able to get the takedown, she got the takedowns the first time these girls fought, but just wasn't able to do enough, but in this fight, she got some solid control time, landed some decent ground and pound, threatened some, some good submissions, including one in the first and the third that were, that got pretty close, but, uh, you know, a uh, good fight, solid fight, just neither big finishers. But, Mont you know, at the end of the day, when you're on a losing streak like that, you got to get a win. So, shout out to Montana De La Rosa gets it done. I think that, what is that? Is that five in a row for Andrea Lee? Yeah, she, she's honestly probably done. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. Especially because her fights aren't, I'm sorry, particularly entertaining. But next up, we got Bracketona taking on Jesse Butler. And, uh, you know, this fight played out pretty close to how I thought it would. It's just, you know, are you do you want to lay minus 600, minus 650? No. Um, you know, I will say Katona he at least separated more than he tends to do. It seems like he was going back to, okay, you know what? Like I've tried to strike a little bit more in the last couple of fights and he did do a little of that in the third third round of this, but overall it was like he was like, "Nah." Like I, I didn't agree with the arm field decision. So, uh, you know, um, you're good, man. Uh, I thought uh, Katona won that fight, but at the end of the day, like when you're strike, arm feels dangerous on the feet, and he has advantages there. So you know, in this fight, he knew Butler. He's a huge guy for the division, and uh, you know, um, he he's a pretty dangerous striker. He landed a couple good right hands, but every time he'd go to throw a kick, Katona was catching him, taking him down. Um, big dude. I I think he needs to go up to like featherweight. You know, like. This is too much of a jump, you know. May, maybe if he wants to cut down to feather from lightweight, but you, you, he looked like a zombie out there, man. So I think go up to featherweight. You know, I don't know what you were trying to do here. It's just too small, too too light of a weight class for him. But uh, you know, Katona gets back on the winning track. I wish he could get some finishes, but he did at least land some good ground and pound. Um, split him open with some elbows. Next fight, man. This one uh, did hurt. I, I, I did uh, bet Radke as an underdog. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about, we knew Protez was there. To, he's always dangerous. He can clip you. He tends to be losing fights and then clips you. But And I thought Radke was doing a good job controlling. But I'm not going to lie. I could sit here and be like, oh, he just got caught. No, nah, like, honestly, the last, like, 45 seconds, I was like, oh, shit, we're, we're toast. Once Radke, like, started backing up at the end of the round, I was like, maybe he just needs a little bit of a breather like between rounds or or what um i didn't see maybe he got hit with a shot a little bit more you know maybe one of those shots clipped him a little harder than i thought but like before the the last exchange of course but uh you know i think uh maybe one of those leg kicks had him hurt i don't know he just started backing up and i was like oh he's toast because Radke can't fight backing up when he was fighting coming forward i mean he had the he had the round one not that it matters don't i don't need to hear it but uh you know um Protez landed a couple good leg kicks. A couple glancing blows, but maybe one of them hurt. It was probably the leg kicks. Um, and Racky started taking some steps backwards and started hesitating. I'm like, you can't fight Protez like that, man. You can't let him just, like, sit there and, like, pick shots and snipe you. Like, you got to put the pace on him. And when Racky was doing that, he was having success. But, yeah, I don't know what it was that made him start backing up. If he needed a little breather, um, I don't know. It was probably the leg kicks, but... Um, yeah, hey, respect to Protez. Dude's dangerous. Um, 
I, you know, it's not that I didn't think he could definitely finish Radke. It's just, you know, two to one on the guy I think is the minute winner who can also get the finish. But hey, you got to take shots on underdogs here and there. Uh, Ludovic Klein though, next up against Thiago Moises. Um, I picked Klein, but I didn't, I didn't expect it to be as dominant as it was. You know, there was a couple, there was two or three chances where they probably could have stopped this fight. I thought uh, Klein looked great, man. I mean, Moises is a guy who's taken down Makashev. He's taken down a lot of good guys. His wrestling's pretty solid. But Klein was able to stuff the majority of everything and just land big shots, hurt him multiple times. You know, it was it was a good performance by Klein. So I don't know if this will get him in the rankings, but, you know, uh, I could definitely see him getting a ranked opponent after that at least. It's just lightweight, you know, lightweight. Not not only a great division, but a lot of big names, so it's hard to crack into that division. But uh, a really good win for Klein. And we move on to another fight. How this wasn't a finish is beyond me. Punahale Soriano, I picked him, but I didn't bet him. Absolutely mauled Beza. I mean, I posted a meme on Twitter. It's like, Beza, try to get up. No, no, him look at the one where he's looking at the other girl, and it's him just trying to get the heel hook. Oh, my God. It's just... You know, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy, but, you know, leg locks and MMA, is, it's tough. You got to just be, it's got to be like a huge grappling discrepancy. And Soriano's not a terrible grappler. So to, and he's got heavy hands. So, you know, I was surprised Beza was able to eat the shots. Uh, I was making some jokes about it's the new gloves. But, uh, you know, um, Beza, you know, I always say, a lot of times when people say, oh, dude's got no chin, it's usually they're just super hittable. But, uh, and he is just super hittable. He was selling out for the grappling. Um, just couldn't get it done, man. Sorry, I think he blew his wad trying to get those sub and subs in the first round. Sorry, I just started putting a beating on him, man. Just taking him down. You know, Matt returning him. Just getting to spots where he could just land some, like, pretty pulverizing ground and pound, honestly. Beza took, like, 331 shots to the head, so... Um, Pretty brutal for a guy who's coming off several knockout losses. Wasn't a knockout, but I, I don't know, man. He might have took more head drama than a lot in a lot of knockouts. But uh, we move on, man. Next fight, we had uh, Zach Rees taking on Julian Marquez. And, you know, I, I slightly leaned Marquez, but like we talked about, someone's getting knocked out and pr- probably in the first. And Rees is a big dude, a big dangerous dude. And, you know, I think he is a guy who can... He's either going to kill or be killed, you know? Like, he's going to come in here. He's a huge dude. He's going to throw, and he's probably either going to get finished or finish you. Marquez is kind of the same way. This would have had violence written all over it. 22nd. You know, some people were saying early stoppage. Eh, I mean, he was really hurt. I think the, there is an early stoppage on this card, but it wasn't this one. Um, yeah, I was cool with the stoppage. I didn't have a, any money on this fight, but, um, you know, shout out to Reese. Hey, good win. You know, he was going in on the on the mic afterwards, but I uh, seems like pretty dangerous at least early on. But next fight, we got Bruno Ferrer taking on Dustin Stolzfus. I didn't bet this fight. I was pretty confident Ferrer would get the knockout, but you know, this was another one. People were like, "Oh, early, this." People were saying early stoppage on this one. I'm like, "Come on, man!" Like, nah, nah. He was he didn't know where he was at. He ate uh, the most disgusting elbow. If you didn't see it, go on Twitter, search either of these guys' names. It'll come up. Um, Bruno Ferreira, crazy, fuck, crazy knockout, crazy win. Um, yeah, man. I mean, what can you really say? I picked him by first round knockout. He did that. I didn't bet it because it was like minus 160 for, for a knockout. It's just not my style. I'm not playing chalk props. But at the end of the day, hey, he did it. And uh, it, was a, it was a disgusting elbow he hit him with. Please go look at that if you haven't. But, uh, you know, tough matchup for Stolzfus, you know. Bruno Ferreira's a little tank, but I'm looking forward to see Ferreira fight. You know, maybe he'll get like a, you know, 13, 14, 15 guy. I have to look at the at the rankings a little bit, but uh, you know, he he might be starting to. It might be time. He just knocked out Haas, knocked out Stolzfus. Not saying those are world beaters, but solid wins, especially first round knockouts. But we move on, man. Raw Rosas Jr. taking on Ricky Tercios. Ricky Tercios denying the, the the tap of the gloves at the beginning and then saying F you and throwing a head kick. That was pretty uh that was a that was memes. Um he actually had a pretty good first round, got R- Rosas' chin or rear naked choke and uh people were just posting crazy memes like he defended the rear naked choke with that crazy chin. He is honestly uh, look, I'm just saying, he's built crazy. 
He's got a weird build to him, but hey, man, the kid can fight. I picked him first round sub. He got it in the second. Um, you know, Tercios had some moments. Obviously, he got his back. Um, but you know, in the end, Rosas was just too much. I think he threw Rosas off a little in the early on how hot Tercios came out. Literally, like this is still a 19 year old kid, and Tercios came out like a bat out of hell. Um, tried to kind of big bro him. But, uh, even though he's a smaller guy, but, uh, you know, Rosa's able to make some adjustments, get the finish in the second round. Um, good performance. Um, you know, hey, at the end of the day, he's only lost to Christian Rodriguez and C-Rod's a beast, man. We saw that because Bulgarians or Dolgarian's a beast, Bulgarian. Um, so, you know, C-Rod, C-Rod's no chump, so I, I can't really hold that against him too much. This kid Rosa's. You know, still green. I really hope they build him slow. You know what I always say, man. These guys that are coming to the UFC when they're like 18, 19, 20, even 21, guys and girls, it doesn't tend to work out well for them. I truly believe you should wait, get the experience, build, get better, grow everywhere, even just mentally until you get to like 24. Because once you get to the UFC, it's like lose-lose. You either lose or you win, and then now you're fighting ranked guys, and now you're taking injuries and head trauma that by the time who cares oh you got to the ufc when you're 20 cool you're gonna be out before you're 30 like you might as well wait or before you're in 27 28 you might as well wait until you're 24 and go till you're 32 34 maybe even longer because you waited you didn't get absolutely pummeled when you get like 21 and you're fighting a 31 year old dude in his prime but uh we move on man co-main event uh, we had Dominic Reyes, Justin Jacoby. This really was the the killer for me um, because you know I had cashed the over for my parlay and the Lapalus and Lapalus parlay, and uh, you know um, I really needed Jacoby here to get it done. But I will say, if there's a way for me to lose money, I'd you know that's the way you want it to be. It was nice to see Dominic Reyes get a win. Um, he's had a lot of bad bounces. You know, he knocked Yuri out, I swear, in that fight. And had him hurt it several times. Now Yuri went on to win the belt. You know, it's been a rough run for Reyes. Split, obviously, number, you know, I, I can't say the bad luck without mentioning the John Jones decision. I'm not going to lie in the moment I thought Reyes won, but after I'm one of the people who I, I, I got to say, I, I actually think John might have edged those last three rounds. But, you know, regardless, took John to a, to a you know, a, a really dicey decision. <clears throat> it was a good win, you know. Um, and I'm glad to see him get back on track. Jacoby looked good, but I think you know he landed a couple shots and got hit a couple good times as well. And he just said screw it, and he doesn't typically do that. I think he got out of character. Um, maybe he's listening to the to the fans too much. I don't know. Maybe maybe it has nothing to do with that. But w when he was kind of keeping it, you know, a slower pace. He was doing good, and then then when he got in the pocket and just started throwing, I was like, oh, no, no. Like, I was literally saying that during the – before he even got hit with it big, I was going, no, 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 no. Do not do this with Reyes because at the end of the day, he's a big dude. He's an athletic dude. He's got a big left hand, <clears throat> and he's he got power. He's fast. Um, he can bang, and I didn't want Jacoby to do that. I wanted him to, you know, leg kick, pop, 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 pop. And then let Reyes maybe, maybe if he is shot, run into it, run into something. Otherwise, just you're the best. I think he's still the better, like, technical striker. It's just, hey, man, you went into a phone booth and started brawling with Dominic Reyes. And, hey, like, dude, dude's good there, man. So, hey, respect to Reyes. Get, getting it done. Good to see him get a win, honestly. And we move on to the main event, even though that did. That did it would have been a great night and turned into a slight loss. Um, could have still turned it around though with this Jared Cannonier Nasuddin Imovev. I did cash the over, but um, you know, definitely was unfortunate that uh, the stoppage. It was a good fight. Both guys had their moments. I could see two one either way. Two of the judges had a two one Cannonier. One had it two one Imov or two one Imovev. Um. Either way, you had it scored. Honestly, I was thinking, Imovev might be up 2-1, even though I had Cannoneer. I'll be honest. Um, I thought Imovev probably edged two of those rounds. Cannoneer won the first, and then Imovev probably stole the, uh, I think it was the third. That was really close. Um, and then the second. Um, but Cannoneer wasn't out of it, so, and he's always dangerous. And he's a guy where, you know, he tends to do well late, whereas 
Imabev tends to slow down, even though he was doing well with his gas tank, but still, you know, um, if you just look at the history of their fights, you know, um, you would tend to think Cannonier would take on, even though he's 40, you know, pick up late. So, really unfortunate they stopped it. Even though, even like two seconds before they stopped it, he landed a big right hand that made even Imabev take a step back. Don't get me wrong, Cannonier was hurt, but he's a durable guy. He's a tough guy, and he's going to fight. And it was pretty unfortunate stoppage, man. Especially because the guy's 40. It's his last run. You know, this loss really sets him back. You know, he was right there in the mix for a title shot. And now he's he'd probably need like two, two, maybe even three wins, considering he's not as big of a name or draw as so those top, top guys. So really tough loss. I, I, I honestly typically say Herzog is the best ref in the game, but man, in the main event, you got a guy so much on the line. I mean, they always have so much on the line, double their paycheck, yada yada, rankings. This guy's 40 in a division where like the top three, four guys are big names, and he's kind of not, and he doesn't maybe always have the most exciting fights, so the UFC's not super inclined to push him. At this point, it's like he's got to win like two, three fights in a row, probably Maybe just two if you got a finish sprinkled in there. But if it's decisions, it would be like three. <clears throat> three fights at 41, 42, 43 years old. You know, it's like, it's tough. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, I like Jared. Um, I, you know, we could see if he could bounce back. Or you'd think the UFC would keep that in mind. You know, a lot of times they'll low-key kind of keep stuff like that in mind. But we'll see what they end up doing. You know, he is a little older, and this game is unforgiving. They might kind of use this to be like, okay, time for you to us to use you up, squeeze that last juice, and milk some new guy. But, uh, you know, good fight. It was a good fight. Imavev did look good. And I've always been a big Imavev guy, honestly. It's just, you know, I thought plus money on Cannonier here, five rounds. I like it. But, uh, you know, it's not like I don't think Imavev's good. I Like I said in my videos all week that I thought Imavev will in three years or so be fighting for a title it's just you know at this point in their career I like the number on Cannonier but at the end of the day congrats to Imavev hopefully he gets like maybe probably needs like two wins because like I said those top guys you got the you got Izzy Strickland obviously Drickus obviously already the champ uh, and, he, and even beyond that, that that three right there but like there's kind of a weird thing going on with some rematches but then you know even beyond that um we'll see what ends up playing out but i think he probably needs two wins especially since you know this wasn't the it's not exactly a highlight reel but hey it was a good fight so respect to him it was a fun card man hope you guys made money hope you enjoyed it um we'll be back next week my boy alex perez is back plus money again uh we'll see you know do i take it do i take another dip I don't know. I guess you'll find out. I will catch you guys. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to get to me before Tuesday. But until then, Tuesday night, my video will drop. I'll catch you guys then. Uh, I'm going to do a full card breakdown as always. And then uh, Thursday with the quick picks and prop bets. So catch you guys then, man. Until then, peace.